When it comes to retirement, I think there are five compelling reasons why you should bring your retirement date forward and retire as soon as you can. Hi there, I'm just out on my daily five mile walk. We've got some lovely weather in the UK at the moment, so I'm making the most of it on this sunny Monday in June. I've just stopped to have some lunch and my stopping off point is actually a graveyard. Now, before you say anything, I just want to let you know that I'm not in the habit of hanging around graveyards. It just so happens that this is about halfway on my walk and it's the only bench for miles. So it's as good a place as any and I'm not bothered about hanging around with the dead. I can guarantee you that. It has made me think about one or two things to do with retirement. So in this video, I wanted to share with you five compelling reasons why I think you should bring your retirement day forward. Retirement is a very personal thing. We've all got different ideas on the subject. Some people want to retire early, some people want to retire later, and some are in between. There are those that don't want to retire at all. I'm very much in the camp of early retirement. I'm 63 now and I retired at 44, so I've been retired for 19 years. And I can honestly say it was the best decision that I made. Now, full disclosure, I haven't been fully retired that whole time. I've been doing part-time work for the last 15 years or so, business advising, coaching and mentoring. I do that because because I want to keep my mind sharp, I want to stay in the game and I really enjoy doing it. But for the first four years I was fully retired, I didn't do any work at all. In this video I want to share with you five compelling reasons why I think that retiring early is a good strategy and I'm going to lay out these five reasons as to why I think you should bring your retirement date forward. Whatever date you're thinking of retiring, I would urge you to rethink and see if you can retire earlier. The first reason that I'm going to give you is time. Time is our most precious commodity. It's the one thing that doesn't replenish, and yet it's the one thing that we all take for granted. After I'd finished my lunch, I thought I'd have a bit of a look around the graveyard. I was curious as to what age people were when they passed away, and I was actually quite shocked to find that there were a lot of people in that graveyard who had died in their 60s. There was the odd smattering of people in their 90s, a few in their 80s, quite a lot in their 70s. But the ones in their 60s, that made me really think long and hard. I want to ask you a question. If you knew the date of your death, would that change your mind about the date when you should retire? I'd like to put a bit of context around that question based on my own personal experiences. My own father retired at 56 and he passed away at 74, which means he had 18 years of retirement. Thankfully, his illness was short, so most of those years were good years. However, if he knew that he was going to die at 74, when he was, say, 40, would he have decided to retire earlier? Another member of my family has lived to 94 and he's still active. That's my Uncle Archie, my dad's brother-in-law. In a bizarre twist of fate, they both share the same birthday, the 3rd of April, one year apart. My dad was born in 1929 and Archie was born in 1930. Who would have thought that two sisters would marry men who had the same birthday? Now the thing about Archie is that he retired early-ish at 63. But here's the thing, if he knew he was going to live to 94, would he have worked perhaps a bit longer? Well, I did ask him that question in a previous video. I'll put a link in the description below if you wanted to watch my interview with Archie, where he shares his wisdom about retirement. Even though Archie's retirement has lasted over 30 years, I would argue that he's only had about 10 good years. The reason for that is that his wife, my Auntie Jean, passed away at age 77 after a fairly long illness. Archie was 82 at the time, which means he's lived the last 12 years without his life partner. And they were married for over 50 years. They did everything together. They have no children. They doted on each other. And Archie has been living without her for quite a long time. Now he puts on a brave face, but I can tell you he's not happy. He misses her greatly. Ever since she died, he's done hardly anything. They used to do a lot of traveling, a lot of walking in the countryside, and all that stopped when she passed away. My Auntie Jean had a stroke in her mid 70s, and for the last three years of her life, she was in and out of hospital before finally passing away at age 77. It was a great blow to Archie and had a massive impact on his retirement. The reality is they probably only had about 10 good years together. I've yet to ask him because it's a bit of a sensitive subject, but I wonder what his thoughts would be about his retirement date if he knew he was going to lose his wife at such an early age. It's a similar story with my mum. When my dad passed away, she was only 72 and she'd been retired for about 10 years at that point. So in her case, similar to Archie, she only had 10 good years of retirement with my dad. After he passed away, she was never the same. Unlike Archie, she didn't put on a brave face. 
She grieved for the next 13 years before passing away at age 85 herself. The experiences of my relatives have definitely shaped my opinions on retirement. They've been a big factor in why I decided to retire at 44. I wanted to make sure I had a good amount of time in retirement with my wife and with my son. And I've been very fortunate so far that I've had 19 good years. And I'm hoping that I'll live well into my 80s and stay in good health. If all goes well, I could have 40 or even 50 years of retirement. But I've got to be realistic. There'll come a point where my health will probably fail. There'll come a point where either me or my wife will pass away and one of us will be left alone. And that's why I don't see any point in delaying retirement till you're well into your 60s or even your 70s. You have to make the most of the time that's left. And by bringing your retirement date forward, you give yourself more time to spend with your loved ones. This brings me on to my second reason, which is health. As discussed in the previous point, a number of my relatives fell ill and passed away in their 70s. Now we all assume that we're going to stay in good health, but there are no certainties in that respect. And I think the longer you delay retirement into your 60s and your 70s, I think you're taking the risk that you might not be in good health and you might not be able to do the things that you can do now if you're in your 40s or your 50s or even your early 60s. I'm 63 and whilst I've been in good health over the last 19 years, there are one or two health issues creeping in. I've got gallstones and in a few months time, I'll be having my gallbladder removed and I've no idea what effect that's going to have on my health. What's life going to be like after I've had my gallbladder removed? Hopefully it'll be okay. But what if it's not? Whereas the last 19 years I've had plenty of energy and no health issues and I've been able to do the things that I've always wanted to do. It's just that instead of doing them in my 60s and 70s, I did them in my 40s and 50s instead. The third reason why I think you should retire as soon as you possibly can and bring your retirement date forward is relationships. I'm very fortunate in that I've been able to spend a lot of time with my young son. He's now 25, but when I retired, he was about seven, and I got to spend a lot of real quality time with him. I was the dad who took him to school, picked him up from school, went to the cricket matches, went to the rugby matches, got to chat with him in the car on the way home from school, and I don't think I would have had that opportunity if I'd have followed a normal path of working through into my 60s and seeing him only in school holidays or perhaps when I got home in the evening when he was a little bit older. The other big benefit, as far as I'm concerned, is I get to spend a lot of time with my wife and that is a good thing. I enjoy my wife's company. We were married at 24 years of age so we're not far off now our 40th year and I've enjoyed the time that I've been able to spend with her. During the school years we couldn't get away from home too much. I mean our son was at school, he needed dropping off and he needed picking up at night so there's only so much time that we had available but we used that time by getting out and about into the countryside and going on long walks and I really enjoyed that. I love hiking. I mean I'm out and about today on a walk on my own. The only reason I'm on my own today is that my wife's actually gone off on a walk with her best friend who has just retired. She's in her early 60s, she's a nurse and she's finally taken retirement. So my wife's out and about supporting her because I think she's finding it a little bit difficult to adjust. And that brings me on to my fourth reason which is hobbies. Now I have to admit that I've never really been a one for hobbies. I'm not into gardening. I'm a pretty poor golfer so I wouldn't want to spend too much time doing that. However, one of the things that I love to do is going out walking in the countryside and I also enjoy working out at the gym. So retiring early has given me a lot more time to indulge in those hobbies. Now you might be somebody who's got other interests. Maybe you like to paint or perhaps you like tinkering with your car or motorbikes, that sort of thing. Or maybe you're a budding writer or maybe you fancy starting a YouTube channel like this one. Well the reality is that with more time at your disposal in retirement you can indulge those hobbies and pastimes. One of the things that my wife and I did and with our young son was we did a lot of traveling in our late 40s and early 50s. We ticked off a lot of countries from our bucket list. We went to New Zealand, Australia, Singapore, Brazil, Costa Rica, the Caribbean. So we really ticked off quite a few places. There are still quite a few of them that are on the bucket list but these days I have to admit that I do prefer a quieter holiday, a bit closer to home. I like to spend a week in Scotland in the spring and I like to go to the Algarve in Portugal in the autumn and again for a whole month at Christmas. Back in the day when I was in my late 40s, early 50s, we enjoyed cruise ship holidays. Now having done quite a lot of cruise ship holidays I prefer a quieter pace of life. The final thing I wanted to talk about is money. 
Now I just want to say before I get into this topic that I'm not giving any financial advice out here and I'm well aware that everybody's circumstances are different. However the point I want to make is that you might not need as much as you think you do to retire. There's a lot of talk about needing a seven figure pension pot and then withdrawing 4% a year and all that kind of stuff. Now I'm not so sure about that. There are plenty of people sharing videos on here who've retired with much less than that. If you're thinking about retiring but it's money that's keeping you from doing it well maybe there are some things you can do you could possibly make some lifestyle changes reduce your expenses some of the things that you purchase do you really need them I have to admit 20 odd years ago I spent far too much money on cars clothes and things like that eating out those kind of things these days at 63 I've only got one car whereas once upon a time I had two I had an SUV a little sports car for weekends my wife had a small runabout and when he got to 17 my son had an old banger but they were all things that needed maintaining they all cost money whereas now it's just the one vehicle so maybe you could not change your car as often or perhaps get an older car and keep it longer I don't know it's up to you these are just some of the things that come to mind the other thing is that we lived in a large family house for 20 odd years i needed the space to store my cars on the driveway and we had quite a few rooms these days i've got a much more modest house in the city center it's half the size of the one before and uh, it's the best thing that my wife and i have done downsizing we live very close to a major railway station and there are excellent transport hubs to other parts of the country so maybe that's something you should consider. Do you need as large a house as the one you've got? I mean, do you need a house under ownership at all? Maybe you could sell your house and rent. Again, there are videos on here of people that have done that. Maybe that's an option for you. I don't know. I don't know your personal circumstances and I don't know your opinions on the subject, but there are ways that you can deal with the financial aspect and bring your retirement date forward here's a quick recap of the five reasons why i think you should retire as soon as you can number one time number two health number three relationships number four hobbies number five money i hope this video helped if it did and you're planning on bringing forward your retirement you might want to watch this video next it talks about the seven things you should stop doing if you want a happy retirement i'll see you next time